प्रभु तव मूर्ति विनोदकारी पल बन विसरे नहीं जो विसारी जुगल चरण सोल चिन्ह जेह नजर समीप रहो अमारी एह नजर समीप रहो अमारी एह कंशाम महाराज निज हरि कृष्ण महाराज निज स्वामी नारायण भगवान निज सुप्रीम ऑल माई डी और बिलविड घनश्याम महाराज द पैथ मेकर टू आर लिबरेशन आर अट मोस्ट डियर पूज्य गुरु जी पूज्य संतो एन ऑल ऑफ यू भक्तो जय स्वामी नारायण As we continue our Yuga courses, today's lecture will be based on Yuga course seven, and there's three segments to this course. First, we'll take the Vata of Kalyankanika, Puja Guru Ji's Vato. From there, we'll go to the Vachnamrut Gadada, last chapter, second, and then finally, we'll end it off with a Charitra in the life of how Puja Guru Ji helped one. Helped another cure his illness. Swami Narayan Hare, Kalyan Kanika, Puja Guru Ji's Vato. Puja Guru Ji says, until one doesn't understand God as omnipresent, the true happiness of God's form will not be realized. Kanika one. Vat number seventy-seven. This vat is regarding the basis of Maharaj's omniscient powers, and if one cannot understand Bhagwan to be omniscient, what does omniscient mean? First of all, omniscient means all-knowing, and he sees everything. He is all-knower. And he is present everywhere. Now, first, let's give an example. A principal runs a school. Let's say two thousand kids go to this school. Then the principal has established around fifty cameras around the whole campus of the school, inside and outside. Now, with these fifty cameras, there is a central location where all fifty cameras can be seen on a screen, which is based in the principal's office. Now, the principal, in his office, on his computer screen, on his TV screen, can see all of these fifty cameras in squares, and he can enlarge. Whichever camera he wants, and can see everything, while sitting in the principal's office, while sitting in his office. Now, that is a feat where one can say indirectly that the principal is in fifty places, while just being in one place. Due to modern technology, this is possible, but an instrument. Or multiple instruments such as a computer, uh, a DVR, multiple multiple uh, cameras, CCTV cameras, need to be used in order for this operation to occur. Now, the principal, while sitting in his office, can see from all fifty angles, whatever he wants, whenever he wants, at the same time, but. Not without an instrument. Bhagwan's case is obviously different. What is the nature of Bhagwan? How he is in this various aspect? Sadguru Gunatita Nand Swami explains in his Vato, Prakran Two, Vat Number Fifteen. Swami says, "This is translated in English. If one understands this Maharaj and Sadhu as they are." There would be nothing else remaining to do. Then a question was asked: How could one understand 
them. Well, then Swami said a sloka in Sanskrit, and then the translation of that sloka is that Maharaj and his Ekantik Satpurush have the capability of looking at each and every soul's intentions at the same time without any instruments. Just to put things into perspective, if a fist was made right now, if you're sitting there, if you make a fist, inside of this fist, you can grab anywhere, anywhere you like, inside of this fist, there is enough souls to fill one universe. That's how minute the soul is. And that's how many souls can be, you can say, uh, are in one's fist. Now, think about how big this whole earth is. This is just the space of earth we're talking about right now. And think about how high the sky is and how big the sky is. And think about how many souls there must be. Just on earth we're talking about. This is just an example. From there, Bhagwan and his Ekantik Satpurush have the capability of looking at each and every soul's intention, not action. Obviously, that's, that's, that can be possible, but intention. One's intention is very deep down inside one's heart. An intention is not something that's on the surface level. It's actually very, very deep inside. Just like how an iceberg is 80% below the water and 20% above the water. Intentions are under the water. Yet, Maharaj and the Satpurush have the capability of perceiving, seeing each and every soul's intention without a single instrument. The principal uses cameras, the principal uses a DVR, a computer, and can only see 50 angles. There's multiple, numerous, hundreds of blind spots around the school campus that he cannot see due to the lack of technology, maybe not so, but due to the lack of talent or due to the lack of one's power. But that's just all due to modern technology. But Maharajan is Ekantik Satpurush, according to Gunatitanan Swami, Prakran 2, Vat number 15, have the ability to do this. That's why Maharaj's omniscient powers are very, very unique and not and cannot be compared to any other avatar, any other incarnation, any other deities, or anyone else. And that power is given to the Ekantik Satpurush by Maharaj himself. So that the Ekantik Satpurush can do the karya, do the works here on earth of liberating multiple numerous souls. That is why these powers are given. Yet, the Ekantik Satpurush does not like using them. The Ekantik Satpurush feels that this is nothing compared to the qualities of sadhuta, to the qualities of humility, to the quality of 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 being humble, these powers are insignificant. But going back to this vat, until one doesn't understand God is omnipresent, the true happiness of God's form will not be realized. Meaning, what relation does happiness of Bhagwan's form have to do with understanding Bhagwan as omnipresent what is what is the connection well in our day-to-day -day life there are many things that are done which Bhagwan may not like and due to that it causes impurities inside of our heart by understanding Bhagwan to be omnipresent present everywhere one cannot do anything which Bhagwan does not like when that occurs, slowly but surely, our soul starts to become pure. Because all that bad stuff is not entering inside of our heart. 
the more we do Sant Samagam, the more we do Bhakti of Bhagwan, the more we do Seva of Bhagwan and Santo, the more those impurities wash away. And when those impurities wash away, then one will be able to experience Bhagwan's murti, Bhagwan's idol inside of one's heart on a very, very clear, clear, you can, with a very, very clear conception. That's how the relation between understanding Bhagwan is omnipresent and attaining Bhagwan's uh, happiness through his form have a connection. This was Puja Guruji's Vat from Kalyan Kanika, Kanika 1, Vat 77. Moving on to the Vachnamrut, Gadada, last chapter, second Vachnamrut. This Vachnamrut has two important points that definitely each and every Mumukshu spiritual aspirant will need to understand to safely cross the ocean of Maya and attain Bhagwan. Gadada last chapter second, the attainment of all Purusharts incarnate God in the form of the Guru. Swami Narayan Hare, on the evening of Samvat 1882, June 11th, 1826, Swami Sri Sajanti Maharaj was sitting on a low wooden seat in the courtyard of the Mandir of Sri Vasudeva Narayan in Dadakachar's Darbar in Gadada. He was wearing a white kish and had covered himself with a white cotton cloth. He had also tied a black bordered, bordered white bog around his head. Tassels of Mogra flowers had been inserted in that bog. At that time, an assembly of Munis, as well as devotees from various places, had gathered before him. This is just setting the scenario of Bhagwan, what he was doing, where he was, what he was wearing, and who was in present. Moving on. Then Sri Jimaraj poised the question. One sees that the world is perishable, and that the Chaitanya separates from the body and leaves it. Yet, the predominance of the world does not diminish from one's heart. Despite thoroughly believing God to be the ocean of bliss, one's mind still does not focus on God. Also, satsang does not become predominant in one's heart, and one cannot eradicate love for wealth, women, and other pleasures of the world. What can be the reason for this? Thereupon, Muktan and Swami replied, the person lacks vairagya. As a result, he cannot eradicate the predominance of the world from his heart, nor can he develop love for God. So the question pretty much just simply states that, you know, the soul is inside the body and understands that this world is perishable, yet the, the world's predominance making the world more primary and everything else more secondary, we can say, remains in one's heart and it does not diminish, it does not go away. Even if the soul does understand that this body is false, this world is false, Bhagwan is the bliss, of, uh, the bliss, ocean of bliss, still this does not happen. What is the reason for this? And then Muktan Swami gave an answer saying that he lacks Vairagya and Let's see what Bhagwan says. Sri Jimaraj then clarified, It is true that there is a deficiency in Vaidagya. Vaidagya meaning non-attachment for the world, worldly objects, everything, the body, everything. But it appears to me that the inclination which forms as one practices satsang remains at it as it is forever. A different inclination does not develop. By practicing satsang, that inclination may be nourished, but the inclination itself remains unchanged. What does inclination mean? Something that one likes to do. Um, something that one has a very much interest in, that one is very much attracted to. For example, I'll give you a couple of worldly examples, and then I'll give you a couple of spiritual examples, so it'll fit. I have the inclination to eating tasty food. 
it's something of my liking. I like it very much. I have the inclination of working out. Working out and building my body. I have the inclination of playing sports. Okay? Now, in spiritual text, I have the inclination of doing seva. I have the inclination of reading scriptures. I have the inclination of doing sant samagam. Meaning something that you very much like, something that you're very much interesting, interested in, something that your mind is pulled towards is called an inclination. Now Bhagwan is saying that when one first comes to practice satsang, whichever inclination forms, that remains forever. A different inclination does not develop. By pra so it's not only that when you come into satsang and whatever you like, only one thing, one inclination is built. Some spiritual aspirants have multiple inclinations. Mostly they do. There's very rare that only one inclination builds. But most spiritual aspirants, mumukshus, that come into satsang, slowly but surely through the sant samagam develop uh, multiple, um, spirit, uh, multiple inclinations. And from there, their whole life, they live off of that inclination. No matter what happens, it's kind of like the bird going back to its nest. No matter what happens, uh, one may have to do something that one may not like. But when that is all done, that person will go back to his inclination. May it be doing seva, may it be reading, may it be doing kathavarta, may it be... Uh, 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 Sansamagam may it be uh, singing kirtans, etc., so on and so forth. It's just something that's very, uh, you can say, second natured to the mind. That's how it's set up after coming into satsang. By practicing satsang, that inclination may be nourished, but the inclination itself remains unchanged. Bhagwan is stating clearly whenever a person's inclination is being formed, his mind becomes disturbed in the process of formation. Meaning, <clears throat> suppose you, one has an inclination to do something, uh, seva. Well, from there, there's many obstacles uh, in doing seva. Uh, one swabhaus, one's nature is also uh, going to be a little shaved off while doing seva. Now, that's going to disturb that process, that formation, because one may feel that I'm doing this, yet this is happening. But that's just something to understand. It's a it's a subject of understanding. It's not anything uh, that it's not anything where one has to give up that inclination. But let's see what Bhagwan is saying ahead. Just as the mind of an extremely lustful person is disoriented by lust, and the mind of an extremely angry person is disoriented by anger, and the mind of an extremely greedy person is disoriented by greed. Similarly, a person's mind becomes disoriented in the process of developing his inclination. Then during that disturbance, whichever inclination develops is the inclination that remains. It's kind of like um, one going through a tough training process. Um, <clears throat> may, it be, may it be anything that you're training for. It's going to be difficult in the, in the beginning, but then slowly but surely, uh, it will work out after that training process is over. In the same way, while that inclination is developing, it will be tough uh, because one will have to encounter many obstacles. Uh, one does not have the proper understanding. There's many angles we can look at it. But in the end, after that training process is done, then that inclination stabilizes. And when that inclination stabilizes, then one would be able to, uh, you can say, reap the true fruits of satsang. Therefore, one who is wise should realize one's own inclination. Because when one is disturbed by the influence of lust, anger, etc., if one contemplate, contemplates, meaning thinks, upon one's own inclination, the influence of lust, anger is lessened. So, Maharaj is on one thing Maharaj is leaning towards developing actually good inclinations there's many inclinations out there many types of ang we can say 
But Maharaj is showing us an antidote that if one relies on one's own inclination, then the forces of the uh, of the internal enemies will lessen down, dim down, and then eventually they'll stop coming. In addition, just as a householder feels remorse if he experiences lustful thoughts on seeing his attractive mother, sister, or daughter, similarly, one should feel remorse when objects other than satsang become predominant in one's heart. That's self-explanatory. If one does not feel similarly remorseful on ent entertaining thoughts for indecent objects, then satsang does not remain predominant in one's heart. So this is the answer Bhagwan gives. Um, that kind of remorse will automatically develop and from that remorse, um, satsang will remain always, uh, uh, always predominant if one has that remorse. If one does not, then it will always, become, always be secondary and the world will always be primary. Moving on. Now the subject is changing. In fact, the fruits of all spiritual endeavors is satsang. In the 11th canto of the Srimad Bhagwat, Sri Krishna Bhagwan says to Uddhoji, I am not as pleased by Ashtang Yoga, thoughts of Sank, spiritual uh, scriptural study, austerities, renunciation, yoga, yagnas, observances, etc., as I am pleased by satsang. In fact, it appears to me that all sanskars one has gathered from the previous lives and have been attained through and have lives have been attained through the association with the Satpurush. Even today, those who obtain sanskars do do so through the association of the Satpurush. One who has attained the association of such a Satpurush but is still unable to understand matters is as they really are, should be known to be an extremely dull intellect. Now, in this vat, th this vat uh, where Maharaj, uh, or Maharaj mentions that I'm not pleased by Ashtang Yoga, so on and so forth, as I'm pleased by uh, Satsang, is mentioned in Garuda, middle chapter 54, along with Swami Nivato. But, Maharaj is pleased by satsang. Satsang meaning the association of a satpurush. The association of a satpurush we have understood and talked about many, many times. But Bhagwan states after that all the sanskars, meaning all the, you can say, moral ethics, all the good virtues one has attained, is, has attained, may have attained from the previous or previous lives, have been attained through the Satpurush. Even the sanskars from this life have been attained from the Satpurush. Through the association of an Ekantic Satpurush, one attains virtues, one attains virtues such as Mahima, Prem, Dharma, Bhakti, Gnana, Vairagya. One attains, one attains many, many different things. But this is all due to the Ekantic Satpurush's association. As for me, I consider this assembly of satsangis to be far greater than the assemblies in Swedip, Goluk, Vekund, and Badrikashram, and I see all of these devotees as being extremely luminous. Indeed, I swear by this assembly of sadhus that there is not even the slightest untruth in this matter. Why do I have to swear in this manner? Because not everyone understands such divinity nor can they see it. That is why I have to swear. Bhagwan is stating something that, obviously, which is something that is second nature to him, but he is stating that this assembly, the satsangis, the bhaktos that are sitting in front of him, are satsangis far greater than the assemblies of Svetip, Goluk, Vekund, and Badrikasham, because they're the assembly of Akshradham. Wherever Bhagwan Swaminarayan's Murti resides, that various place is Akshradham. And those who are in contact are also in the same place, sitting in Akshradham in front of Bhagwan's idol. Thus, even after attaining this satsang, which is rare for even Brahma and others, 
affection for objects other than God still remains because the person has not developed a firm conviction for the manifest form of God as he has for the non-manifest form of God. That is why the Shrutis, Shrutis state, if a person develops conviction in the Guru, who is the manifest form of God, in the same way that he has conviction in the non-manifest de Devas, then as a result he attains all the Arthas, which are described as attainable. In fact, when he attains the company of such a Sant, he has, while still alive, attained he who was to be attained after death. That is to say, that he has attained that which is called the highest state of enlightenment or liberation while still being alive. This is one of the most deepest secrets in the Vachnamrut that Bhagwan Swaminarayan reveals to us through his daya or his compassion. Um, you know, we haven't read any of these sastras, the Upanishads or the Shrutis or any any of these sastras. But Bhagwan Swaminarayan, taking out and picking out the most important and vital, you can say, gems and diamonds of these scriptures, Bhagwan puts into perspective for us in these 262 Vachnamruts. From these 262 Vachnamruts, Bhagwan Swaminar narrates for us the most vital points to attain liberation, but not only liberation, but ultimate liberation and straight takes us to his abode Akshardham. In the Vachnamrut Gandhara, first chapter 68, Bhagwan Swaminarayan says that I reside in the eight types of murti and the sant. Now, this is a very, very, you can say, gritty concept because some may understand it and many will not. Because there's many misconceptions out in society that the Satpurush is being praised as God. But in reality, there's always a difference of Swami and Sevak. In reality, Bhagwan is Bhagwan and the Satpurush is the Satpurush. But due to the Satpurush's connection with Bhagwan being such being so strong, Bhagwan Swaminarayan lives inside the Satpurush on a very, very high percentile. And due to that, just how a robot can be operated by a remote control, Maharaj operates his within his Satpurush where each and every action, each and every word, each and every thought is all of Maharaj's. That's how much of a grand scale Maharaj lives inside the Satpurush. But here in this Vachnamrut, Bhagwan wants us to understand that if one understands that this, this Guru, this Satpurush that I have received, who is the manifest form of God in the same way, it, I'll read this again, if a person develops conviction in the Guru, meaning Guru meaning Satpurush, one's own spiritual master, who is the manifest form of God, who is the manifest form of God, Bhagwan himself resides inside the Satpurush. In the same way that he has conviction in the non-manifest deities, de devas, then as a result, he attains everything, that he, all the Purusharts, which are described to be attainable, meaning it's a master key, an all-in-one key. If there is a key that can open everything, it's the Agantik Satpurush according to this Vachnamrut, as we just understood. And this key can be understood by accepting the matter that the Ekantik Satpurush is present here on this earth, but Bhagwan Swaminarayan is operating through him in his each and every action. If one understands this concept, then all these Purusharts will be open for that person. Moving on. In fact, when he attains the company of such a sant, he has, 
while still alive, attained he attained he who was to be attained after de death. That is to say, he has attained that which is called the highest state of enlightenment or liberation while being alive. Clear and cut vat. Those who have received the true ekantik satpurusha's sang samagam for us very very fortunate to mention that our puja guruji has attained the state the highest state of enlightenment or liberation while being alive if one can understand this concept which is that this satpurush according going back who is the manifest form of god inside of him bhagwan lives and does all his actions if one understands this factor factor then one has attained the highest state of enlightenment or liberation according to this vachanamrut gadara second chap or third chapter second vachanamrut what i have just explained to you may appear to be simple but in reality it is extremely subtle one who is currently behaving in this manner will understand that this is extremely subtle minute meaning but others will not be able to understand it that is how subtle it is after delivering this discourse shri ji marj bid j sachidanand to everyone and then returned to his residence this is the end of vachanam gadara last chapter second this was our vachanam rup for course number 7 and finally ending it off with the charitra the name of this charitra is the holy water of nakkes this incident occurred in the year of 2012 one devotee by the name of himansu bai lived in the city of baruch in india his father's name was hirubai now hirubai hirubai was uh, 65 years old and due to his old age he experienced some problems in his lungs so immediately he was admitted to the hospital after proper after proper diagnosis the doctor said that hirubai was infected by a serious virus and medical science had not found a treatment for this virus at that time out of millions of people only a few have this kind of infection and those who have this kind of infection die within 10 days as a result hirubai was in the hospital and unfortunately there was 18 other patients in the same hospital thus as per the doctor doctors all 19 of those patients including hirubai would die within 10 days this was the ultimatum himansu himansu bai came to puja guruji at shri swamyan gurukul kandari and explained his father's condition but guruji gave him the holy water of bhagwan swaminarayan's nakkes just to explain nakkes nu jad mean nakkes water is nak meaning nails and kes meaning hair due to the grace of our very very generous nan santo they have preserved bhagwan swaminarayan's nails and hair and articles of clothing and so on and so forth but especially nails and hair by which they had the seva of cutting and they have preserved it and they have passed it down to the next sadhu and so on and so forth that even puja guruji in his puja has bhagwan's nak and kiss meaning nail and hair that he keeps and that is very holy and we'll see in the end of the story what miracles even till today this nakkes does bhagwan swaminarayan's nakkes and instructed him to give the holy water to his father hirubai to drink daily so pretty much that knocking kiss the nail and hair uh it's just dipped into a glass of water and then that's it and then it would, that water was given to hirubai on a daily basis to drink a little bit at a time puja guru ji said maharaj will do good for him i will pray to maharaj himansu bai had complete trust in puja guru ji's words 
This was the main factor. Yes, nutcase water will work, but with what kind of stipulations? Faith, trust in Bhagwan Swaminarayan, his Ekantik Satpurush. If one just thinks it's mere water, if only if one looks at it from such a, 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 a mundane way, where this is just water, this is nothing, what is this going to do to me? Then nothing will happen. But we will see in this story what happens. Therefore, he returned to the hospital and put some drops of the holy water into his father's mouth. From that day on, Onwards, Hirubai started to get better and started to regain his health. By drinking, holy wa by drinking the holy water daily, after a week, Hirubai became completely healthy and was able to go back home. The 18 other patients asked him what kind of medicine treatment actually worked. Hirubai replied, the holy water of Bhagwan Swami Narayan's nutcase. Hirubai gave the holy water to Bhagwan, of Bhagwan Swamirin's nutcase to the other patients as well. Out of the 18 other patients, 17 patients gradually regained their health and were ready to go back home. Unfortunately, one patient who was not able to drink nutcase because of a strict prohibited uh, rule by the doctors or have any other food um, due to the serious condition, died in the hospital. However, the holy water of Bhagwan Swamirin's Nakis and Pujaguruji's blessings worked for a total of 18 patients and their lives were saved. Accordingly, whenever we have any problems or difficulties, we should associate with Pujaguruji and inform him of our problems. By Pujaguruji's blessings, we will definitely become free from such kind of miseries. But science medical treatment, various kinds of vaccines did not work, did not have even the slightest, you can say, effect on Hidubai. And the doctors pers uh, proposed that he would die in 10 days. And on the other hand, a glass of water, which was touched by Bhagwan Swami Narayan's nails and hair and by consuming just a couple of drops cured 18 patients who had the same vir viral or virus infection what, what can be said for that? So where science cannot reach religious you can say the religious world the spiritual world is there. Unfortunately, to, to say there is no way that science will reach the spiritual world because the spiritual world is divine. It is beyond the perception of the mind. And science is science and will stay on this earth. It will not go beyond. Due to that factor, even if medical science is proven wrong at this point, Bhagwan Swaminarayan and his Ekantik Satpurush are always proven right, only if one has faith and trust in them. So this is the course story. This was our course number seven for our U.S. Sabha. For those out there right now, it's a very serious time due to this virus and uh, there should be a couple of months that we still have to surpass. But by doing Bhagwan Swaminarayan's bhajan and by worshipping him and praying, Bhagwan Swaminarayan and his Ekantik Satpurush, Arpuja Guruji will do well and slowly but surely everyone will recover from this virus. We can only pray. Saying this, my humble Jai Swaminarayan.